Welcome to Six Sided Discs course preview of Caesar Ford Championship Disc Golf Course in Xenia, Ohio. Ahead of the Caesar Ford Amateur Championship and Amateur Only B tier on July 3rd and 4th. The course has three different layouts. In this video, we'll be previewing the gold tees, a par 68, 9,888 feet. This will be played by the MA1 division only. You can find course previews of the white tees and blue tees in the video description. This is a really challenging course that features 10 par 4s, two very long par 5s, as well as an impressive variety of obstacles, elevation, water hazards, narrow caps, long open fairways, and even a couple cute critters out there as well. It'll be sure to test every aspect of your game, so make sure you come prepared. Six Sided Discs will be on site all day, both days, selling discs from all your favorite brands, accessories, bags, and more, including grip enhancing chalk balls, minis, t shirts. Make sure you come check it out. We'll also be raffling off this gorgeous Primal Run Neo Evolution Splice from Discmania with Portland Open champion Eagle McMahon's commemorative bottom stamp underneath. Tickets are $1 each and the winner will be drawn after the last division's payout is finished on Sunday evening. We begin at hole one, par three, 302 feet from the gold tee. We're actually standing on the gold tee right now behind the blue tee. We've got a long gap. You can go straight down the left-hand side, maybe a flex forehand, but that will challenge some rough on the left side fairway. Or you can go right over the pavement, which would likely play out of bounds. And hopefully you won't have the portable restrooms in the way. Keith is gonna be our tour guide for the gold tees. And he had a pretty good line there. Looks like it's gonna catch a tree and fade out a little bit early, but does stay in the fairway. Most of the holes on this course are gonna play uh, very close to par and sometimes probably average over par. It's a really tough course, especially from the gold layout. Here you get a view of just how challenging that approach is. Another characteristic of the course is lots of trees. Lots of trees on the fairway, lots of trees, even inside circle one and circle two. So you'll find quite a few obstructed putts. Practice your straddle spin putt too. There's a lot of wind to contest with. Hole two is a par four, 640 feet over a small OB creek right off the tee. You need to get a forehand or turnover shot into the right side of the fairway. And this is a pretty solid position. The cut roll actually opens up a better angle to get down the fairway here. That shot's gonna fade a little bit into the rough and this is really your primary uh, obstacle you wanna avoid. There's tons of fairway trees, but it's mu made much more difficult without having kind of the ideal line from the edge of the fairway and having to pitch out from there. No real reprieve when you get up close to the basket either. There's still tons of guardian trees here lining the fairway. And you also need to exercise caution when approaching the basket because another characteristic of this course are the creeks that run throughout it often conveniently find themselves right behind the basket. And this will be a common occurrence. Make sure you pack a retriever of some kind or some waterproof shoes if you don't mind getting wet. Hole three is a par four, 643 feet, very narrow tunnel shot. 
out of the gate. It would be a tough shot without three trees in the fairway, so it's even tougher with them. Your main objective here is just to get out into the open so you have a clear shot down the fairway for your second shot. Forehand or backhand could play, but a backhand might fade out into the long grass. We're gonna see a beautiful, big turnover shot. Look at the turn that gets when it gets out of the gap. That is absolutely ideal. Keith agrees. And from that shot, even on this long par four, Keith has got a decent chance to approach here. And if you can get beyond this first line of guardian trees, you could have a look, but this is the common mistake to come in early into these bushes and really pinches off your approach. We got another creek right behind the basket, only about six to 10 feet away. So be really cautious on your approach. And this also goes downhill as it comes in, which you can't really tell from the fairway. So make sure you get up there and look at it before you just fling a disc in there. Hole four is a par four, 328 feet. You're just trying to play through this tunnel straight ahead to land somewhere at the base of that hill there to give you an approach up toward the basket. We're gonna see two shots here from Keith. Give us some different angles. This first one's pulled a little bit to the right, but fades out and should be in an okay position. And we'll see an alternative angle looking back at the tee. And this is ideal. Throw a straight fairway driver if you can and just get right here in the middle. That way you've at least got an approach. This is where you don't want to be. Left side fairway is really obstructed trying to approach the basket, which is up on the hill to the right. Your ideal landing zone would be right here at the base of that hill before this pit in between that hill and the basket. The pit is full of weeds, probably some poison ivy, trees, really obstructed. And then hopefully you get up here onto the little flat area by the basket, but even a great approach shot is gonna leave a 50 or 60 foot uphill putt or approach. And still no rest for the wicked once you get there directly behind the basket is a big drop off into some really thick rough, a place you absolutely want to avoid. Good luck on hole four. Hole five is a little more scorable. From the gold tee, you have a difficult sort of downhill tunnel shot, or you have an open gap up and to the right. If you're a right hand backhand or left hand forehand, you can rip a big hyzer up there to get around the trees. We'll see both of those gaps here. And here's you know, the worst mistake you can make is to pinch yourself off on the left hand side. Going big over the top would be a much safer play, and the mistake would be less of an issue because you'd probably land over here where at least you can see the basket. Here's an angle on that rough on the left-hand side. And from there, Keith can, can't see the basket, can't even see sort of halfway that angle to the basket. So you're just kind of hoping and praying that you can get something that's still going to be a really tough spot. If you do push long at any point on this hole, you can end up in this rough as well, leaving you a really difficult approach. The green does also slope away slightly toward more thick grass. So watch your speed coming in on a putt like this, or you can easily end up trickling down the hill. Moving on to hole six, another par four, 673 feet. This is also very challenging from the gold tee. You have a small gap directly ahead to set up a second shot across the fairway. Alternatively, if you don't wanna go for that tunnel, there is a wide hyzer route available where you can kind of aim to the edge of this right tree line and then fade in just on the other side. If you do make it through that narrow fairway gap, which is right here at the blue tee, you'll find yourself just on the fairway there, hopefully not in the tall grass. 
Keith is going to show us the wide route here. And the trees aren't that thick on the edge. You can get through, even though that one was a little bit low. It did work its way onto the fairway. The thing you need to be cautious of out here is this is one of the highest points on the course, and it is very windy. Uh, it was extremely windy the day we were out here. And you're going to see the mistake getting the wind under the flight plate, and it's just going to push this way, way out into the tall grass. And that might easily result in a lost disc. We pitched one out here on the fairway for Keith to approach with, and this is also dangerous if you come into this green with a little too much heat. You can go way downhill behind it into some thick rough. And even on a safer approach like this, a jump putt can get away, with, away from you and really get traveling down that hill into some more weeds. Moving on to hole seven, par three, just 203 feet, but a very difficult 203 feet. No real obvious route through the trees here. You're just trying to play a skip shot. I've also seen thumbers kind of turn over and bounce off the top of the disc to try and get through this gap. Keith gets lucky with a kick there, almost ended up in the right side bushes. And if you do end up in the bushes on the right hand side, that's really, jail on this hole that's the worst place you could be there's no route to the basket from there and honestly playing out of it and getting out onto the green or at least past those guardian trees is a pretty good play from back in there if you're out here in two shots you should be pretty happy and try and knock down a putt to save par but you're going to be met with that same wind we had on the fairway on hole six because you're back in this big open exposed area. So putting can be a challenge out here. Moving on to the first of the two par fives, hole eight, 1,043 feet. We're going way down the fairway straight ahead where you see the little opening in the trees and the uh, grassy area within them is where the basket will be. And here, your play is just about fairway golf. Keep it in bounds. Keep it out of the tall grass. Keep it out of the trees. This one's low, but the hole does play downhill, and that's going to get a good 400 feet of distance before it burns out. Get a read on the wind, and then play your second shot down the fairway. And again, you're just looking to get somewhere you know make up some distance and this is really the mistake to make if you're going to make one the tall grass is easier to play out of than the brush and trees on the right hand side so at least from here even though you still got about 450 500 feet to go you do have a line to see the basket and at this point keith is going to be playing this for par this is his third shot He's in a good position here, and if he can throw a good approach shot, he can save par on this par five. And from the gold tee, I think par is a pretty solid score. Maybe some of you in MA1 can pump it 500 down the fairway and get up to here in about two shots. That would be really impressive. And then, you know, best case scenario, you're trying to get a birdie look. And this is a great forehand approach. I think that's Keith's Berg there. Well done. If you do come into the green with a little bit of speed, guess what? We've got water behind the basket again. Another creek to go out of bounds. So watch your speed as you come in. We'll see a couple putts come in. This is going to be an aggressive little jump putt here. Really close to going in, but runs the risk of finding that creek. And fortunate not to. All right, hole nine, par four, 522 feet. I believe there is a little OB creek in between the tee, uh, the gold tee and the blue tee, which is the one we see here straight ahead. 
You're just trying to get down the fairway here, hit the gap. If you hit the gap, you can make forward progress and get down towards, uh, towards the basket. Keith really fortunate not to go off the fairway or into the creek on that shot. And here, it's just fairway golf. You gotta get over this hill, but not too far, because there is a road that cuts through the fairway, which we'll see here in a moment. And this is one play, the trees aren't too tall. If you've got an overhand in your bag, you can get over them, that could be a decent shot. Your ideal landing zone from the gold tee for your second shot should be about here. Not too close to the road. You don't want to be on the road, of course, for out of bounds, but it's an easy approach from here, forehand or backhand turnover, and just pitch it right into the hill by the basket. Perfect. And this is one of the uh, least obstructed greens. If you can keep it out of the weeds there on the left side of the circle. You'll be left with an easy putt. And you're also right back at the shelter house and the parking lot. And this is a great opportunity to have prepared ahead of time and brought extra drinks, extra snacks, a pair of dry socks, uh, extra pair of shoes if it's wet or muddy or anything where you had to get in the water. Um, whatever you need, resupply quick on your way to hole 10 as you pass the practice basket and prepare for the back nine because the back nine is brutal. Birdies are hard to come by. Good luck out there. We're on to hole 10, par four, 643. You're thrown from the gold tee behind the hill where you can't actually see the basket going to step over to the right to get a view of the top band there. And there is a ton of long grass between this hill and the basket. So you really want your drive to push right, maybe turn over forehand. Just stay away from that long grass. If you're in the fairway, you can easily approach. And this is a good shot, but it's high and it is going to fade out towards that long grass. Fortunately, doesn't quite land in it. And the wind is ripping out here in this field on a windy day, and that turns that over and pushes it well wide. And we'll pick up here on the green and just see a couple of pro shots. This is easily the most open green on the course, and one of the windiest. It's perched up on a slight hill, slightly uphill approach. And if you're getting really aggressive from distance, there is an out-of-bounds road behind the basket, but it shouldn't factor too much. Hole 11 is a par 4, 515 feet. Out-of-bounds road cuts through the fairway in front of the gold tee. So you're going to need to keep it left of the road and hopefully right of the tall grass, though the tall grass should be your miss as it won't play out-of-bounds. It'll just play, play it as it lies in there. And if you're gonna make the mistake, this is the one to make that does kick left into that grass, but there's still plenty of open airspace. We're gonna give Keith a lie here from the edge of the fairway just so we don't have to trek through that stuff. It is really tall and there were a lot of ticks out there. So make sure you dress appropriately, check often, bring bug spray. Friends don't let friends have ticks hanging onto them all day. The basket is perched up on the hill here. You got roll away risk on both sides of the hill. Lots of trees guarding the basket. And even though it's surrounded by trees, it's very exposed to the wind. You can see the wind blowing here. It's gonna make for some really challenging putts. If you get a really great shot down the fairway, I think you should have a relatively easy pitch up for birdie. But if you don't have the distance to get close to the hill on your first shot, par is your best bet. Hole 12 is a short par 3, 184 feet over an out-of-bounds creek right off the tee. So avoid those early trees or you'll find that out-of-bounds. It's a very narrow tunnel shot. So just trying to keep it low and straight. Anywhere in the fairway will do. And 
and that lands safe, so it's a good spot. So you have another alternative angle, another shot, another kick, but still safe and still a relatively easy pitch up for par. There isn't really a good route, as you can see, there's trees all over the green here, all over the fairway. Pick a line you like, pick your most confident shot, and just try and pitch it up there. And hopefully you'll have an edge of circle or closer look at par. Hole 13 is our second par 5, 1,014 feet. The initial tee shot gap is very small. You're just trying to get beyond these early guardian trees into the fairway. You could even just throw a putter or a mid-range for a more controlled shot out. Keith is gonna go with a forehand destroyer here. And through that gap, that is a phenomenal tee shot. He gets all the way around the corner and he's gonna be able to see straight down the fairway. Here we go. And where you see the player ahead of us, uh, they are just now approaching the entryway to the basket. So you got a long ways to go once you get out here. You're just trying to pump it down and get to the left side of the fairway so that you have an angle at the basket. The fairway does open up as it gets around the corner there. So Keith does just barely get into the long grass. And this is a big booming forehand to get down there. Three full power shots and he catches the early guardian tree. And wouldn't you know it, there's another creek right behind the basket. Again, only a few feet away, so careful on your approach. And it's another challenging approach. Guardian trees blocking the entryway. If you come in with too much heat, you're gonna end up in that creek. If you come in with just a little bit of heat, watch this little tiny little floaty Anheuser almost gets into the water. Rich will show you the way. Go high, go slow, putter, land it soft. Easy tap in. Hole 14 is a par three, 358 feet. Pick your fairway. You can go left or right. Either way works fine. Whatever your most confident shot is, you're just trying to get beyond the end of this little bunker of trees in the middle. And it is a bunker. It is incredibly dense. Keith is gonna throw a great shot just short of the end of the tree line, but it is gonna leave him an open line into a very well protected green. That's an excellent pitch up too. This is a, a really fantastic par on hole 14. And look at all these trees. There really is no clear route to the basket. So if you can get a par in this hole, I think you're gonna be making up strokes on folks. This is your must get birdie of the back nine, hole 15, par three. It's right there, it's open, it's downhill. Take a putter, mid-range, whatever your most comfortable shot is, depending on the wind, and just rip it down the hill, get it by the basket. Keith's going with a Prodigy 400 PA1. And uh, just a touch too much power and the wind is just not letting it fade left. There is a lot of wind out in this field and just never wanted to let that disc get back. Still not a bad spot though. He's maybe edge of circle, he's gotta look. And hopefully you got your scoring in early because scoring on the next two holes is a real challenge. Play hole 16, 17, and 18 for par at best and you'll be making up strokes on the field. This is hole 16, par four, 702 feet. The gold tee is tucked way back in the right corner, which is really the worst place to start. You wanna get as far down the fairway toward the opening and preferably to the left-hand side to have any view of the gap. This hole plays about two thirds of the hole on this fairway and a third beyond this tree line to the right. So you've gotta get out into a position where you can see that opening. This is a really big forehand, and that is in a great spot. Even if it bounced into the tall grass, Keith is able to see through the gap down the fairway, and that's exactly what you need. Gap is actually not too narrow, but as you can see, the wind is, the grass is whipping around, the leaves are blowing. 
think that's what we're talking about here. Trying to work out the wind. And he's going to try a little flex forehand through the gap. And it just catches a tree, so it doesn't quite make the forward progress he wanted. He's going to go to a Viking Storm Loki. Very overstable approach disc. And avoiding those guardian trees on the right is your main challenge as you approach the basket. And that was a great approach. But even though Keith got around to the correct side of the green, there are low hanging branches back behind the basket. So this would be a par putt. If you play the hole perfectly, you might still have a tough putt for par. And I think Keith will end up carting a bogey here. Now let's give him a, let's assume he'd make it in a tournament. You know, it'd be a par. Well played. Hole 17 is another par four, 663 feet. Again, the mistake is to the right. The play is straight or to the left side of the fairway to give you yourself at least some kind of look toward the basket. The basket is another 200 feet beyond the tree line straight ahead. So you've got to get through those narrow trees. And initially this looks like it has way too much turn, but it is going to fight back. And just about, <laughs> just about makes it onto the fairway by a foot. Uh, this is really pinched off though. I mean, there is a forehand gap to try and pitch around the corner but it's really not ideal. You'd much rather be somewhere in the middle of this fairway. And that was looking like a really great forehand approach, but it catches a limb there up high and kicks down. And you've got a couple more obstacles here. The basket does look like it plays as an island, but this is not an island green. It's just got a little fence around it. Keith is gonna pitch up a couple putters here. That's probably the best you can do from back there. I don't think you're gonna wanna run it on an elevated basket. So once you're in here, try and get your putt. And this would be, again, a challenging par putt on an elevated basket. And Keith does cash in the par, which once again is probably gonna pick up strokes on some of the field. It's a really challenging hole. And when you're done, take out the camera, get you a little picture of the beautiful fairway and the other folks playing behind you. Hopefully the weather is as nice for the tournament as it was when we were out here for the preview. And now we're here, hole 18, par four. Keith says this plays like a par six. So good luck. Your first shot needs to clear the creek, which snakes right in front of you. It's almost a full 200 feet of water carry over that creek. And Keith manages to clear it. Here's an alternative angle from the blue tee. You see how that creek kind of comes in and turns and then goes down the fairway. And you just need to land safe on the other side to set up your second shot to go around the corner where this truck is backing down the fairway. Hopefully that won't be an obstacle during the tournament, uh, but they were setting up some kind of event while we were previewing here. So we skipped ahead to the ideal landing zone where we would be taking our third shot, which would be somewhere on the edge of the fairway. There's a little grouping of trees we're gonna see here in a second. You're just trying to crash in the green. The basket's on the hill, plays as an island beyond the out-of-bounds road and to the left of the out-of-bounds amphitheater. These are those trees I mentioned, and this is not a bad mistake here from Rich. He plays his shot over to the left-hand side. And you might be feeling the same way at the end of your round. It is a really, really long 18 holes. Even though Rich went really far left, he does have a straight approach at the basket, which is a nice angle. And that's a good pitch up with his RPM Kotuku. Keith is coming in from an alternative shot he threw just to give us a different angle on this approach. And he throws a great shot and even then still has to get lucky with the play off of the tree. You could easily find yourself putting back at this out of bounds road 
or towards the out-of-bounds amphitheater or rolling away out-of-bounds in any direction. Uh, there's certainly going to be some score changes on the 18th hole. So can't wait to see how it all plays out here at the tournament. Here's one last highlight for you to close out our preview of Caesar Ford. What an incredible course. What a beautiful facility and park we were able to uh, check out. We're really looking forward to the tournament and excited to see everybody out there. I can't stress this enough, though. Make sure you come prepared. Uh, extra water, extra snacks, disc retriever, uh, bug spray, tick spray, whatever you need. Long socks. I like to wear leggings when I play in this kind of spot. I'm not interested in ticks. But uh, we hope you've enjoyed the previews and we hope you find them useful for your round out at the course, whether you're playing in the tournament or down the line uh, and just want to come check out the course. It is well worth the trip. So that is a wrap on our preview of the gold layout of Caesar Ford Championship Disc Golf Course in Xenia, Ohio. Come on out for the tournament on July 3rd and 4th because Six Sided Discs is going to be there all day. We're setting up, we're selling all your favorites, Innova, Discraft, Discmania, Dynamic, Castaplast, Prodigy, MVP, countless other brands that you don't know. Come out and try some stuff. It's going to be great. And don't forget, we've got a raffle going for a brand new Neo Evolution Splice, the Primal Run, with Eagle McMahon's Portland Open champion bottom stamp underneath as well. Tickets are $1 each, and the winner will be drawn after the last division's payout is finished on Sunday evening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sharing this video and liking and subscribing for more local disc golf content from around Ohio. Thank you for your support.